Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again and um, do something different tonight. Uh, it's Friday. Um, I know we're getting ready for football on Sunday. The Cowboys play Sunday night against the Eagles in the game that's very important. Uh, <laughs> I, I say because after that, the Cowboys are going to a bye week and you don't want to go into a bye week. Um how should I say, with a loss. Because, again, that breaks the morale of the team, and I feel like, who knows. Um, it's just not going to be good. It's not going to be a good look. You got to win it. But I'll talk more about that tomorrow when I do my matchup videos, as I do every weekend before a game. All right. So this video today is going to be a little long, so bear with me. Um, as you know, I'm going to talk about the history of the NFL. OK, just to get a little treat for you guys. So I was watching NFL throwbacks and I saw the video up and I was like, wow. So shout out to NFL throwbacks on like just coming up with a bunch of stuff, like talking about like old stuff that happened in the NFL. And this is really good for the younger generation that don't really um, know much about like the history of teams and stuff like this. Hell, you might learn something from this video. I thought that I would um, recreate the video myself. Um, to show you guys on my channel, I thought you guys would appreciate this. So um, I put a lot of note writing and the hard work into doing this one. So uh, bear with me. Um, as you know, the NFL is reaching their 20 year anniversary, um, 2020. Um, it was established in 1920, which it wasn't originally the NFL at that time. But we'll talk about all that. All right. So let's get into it. So. Um, in the NFL's 100-year history, now they've been talking about NFL 100. Um, they they got the logos, the T-shirts, everything. They've been talking about that. So what better time than to do it than now? So, of course, you know there's 32 teams currently. Now, in the NFL's history, there have been over 75 teams in NFL's existence, whether it was the AFL or how the NFL first started. So the NFL first started in 1920, and at the time it was known as the APFA, which is the American Football Association. Professional Football Association, I'm sorry. Um, it started with 14 teams at the time, and they were mostly in the Midwest region and New York. And New York ended up having a lot of teams, but we'll get into that. Um, the funny thing, back then... To start a franchise, and I'm gonna say this, <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh. When I to st back then to start an NFL or I guess American Professional Football Association team, it was a hundred dollars to start a franchise back then. A hundred dollars. Now, you look at a hundred dollars today is nothing, but think about how much a hundred dollars was back in 1920. Uh, <laughs> When you think about in the 1940s and the 50s, a piece of pie, like a, a pie was like 25 cents or 10, 10 cents to 25 cents. So you look at how the dollar amount has changed over the years is just ridiculous. Um, because, again, anybody any, nowadays, if you could get a franchise for $100, anybody could have it. Now you have multi-billion dollar football clubs now. It's crazy. Well, of course, with the Cowboys being the biggest. Um, so the teams that it started out with was the Akron pros, which, um, was the first team to win uh, actual, the first ever title, um, back then, um, the Buffalo all Americans, the Canton Bulldogs, the Chicago Cardinals, Chicago Tigers. Hmm. Somebody's got to go, right? <laughs> the Cleveland Tigers. Why is everybody's naming the same thing? The Columbus Panhandlers. Now, that one was hilarious. The Dayton Triangles. The Decatur Staley's. Remember that name. I'll be talking about that team, too. The Detroit Heralds. The Hammond Pros. The Muncie Flyers. Rochester Jeffersons. And Rock Island Independents. Um, back then, teams didn't really have logos. They were just like, the logo was like the first letter of the, the name. Like, if Akron Pros, it was just AP. Yeah. So um, the Decatur Staley's over time ended up becoming the Chicago Bears. And I'll get into that once I get into their year. Chicago Cardinals, of course, became the Arizona Cardinals. Um, and as we know, today is the Arizona Cardinals is the 
um, the oldest NFL team. They were actually established when they were the 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 original um, Chicago team. Well, before they were the Chicago team, they were founded in 1898 as the Morgan Athletic Club. That was what the Arizona Cardinals originally were. So they went from the Morgan Athletic Club for 1898 to 1920 becoming the Chicago Cardinals. And then as we know it today is the Arizona Cardinals. But we'll, we'll delve into that. The Akron Pros, as I said before, they won the league's first ever title. Their record was 8-0-3. Yes, they had three ties, which is amazing because you know it, it's it's hard to get a tie in the league but to get three of them that's that that was astonishing back then um they were the first team to break the color barrier as well um they had one black guy on the team named fitz fritz pollard um and um when they won the title there were no like lombardi trophies back then or none of that it was basically they got a gold football shaped pendant that's what they, that's what everybody on the team got was a gold football shaper. You won the title. You know what you get? A gold pendant. <laughs> wow, have times changed? Um, <laughs> so in 1921, teams added the the Cincinnati Celts, the Evansville Crimson Giants, the Green Bay Packers, which is one of the teams that had that name originally and never faltered from it. Um, Louisville breaks Minneapolis Mariners, uh, Marines, uh, New York, uh, Brinkley Giants, um, the Tawanda, um, Cardex, which, um, the Tawanda Cardex only played one game, the shortest little franchise, one game and they were done. Um, and then the Washington Senators. The Green Bay Packers, originally sponsored by Indian Packing Company, that's how they got their name, the Packers, um, which technically is the second oldest um, NFL team, the Green Bay Packers. Uh, 1922, seven teams left the league and four new ones joined. And those four new ones were the Milwaukee Badgers, the Orang Indians, the Racine Legions, Toledo Maroons, um, and that's the year that the Staley's changed their name to what we know as now the Chicago Bears. Also in 1922, the league changed its name to the NFL. So it went from the Professional Football League to um, to the American Professional Football Association to the National Football League. And they changed it to the NFL because they wanted to become like almost like... Um, I guess incorporated. They wanted to feel like they were international, like they were reaching a, a, a bigger globe, not just a small area. They wanted to reach out. Um, that was their that was their thinking, and of course that stuck. In 1923, the Evanville Crimson Giants folded, um, and the Cleveland Indians, which is basically a, a baseball team today, um, the Duluth Kellys and the St. Louis All Stars joined the league. In 1924, five teams left and three joined. The Frankfurt Yellow Jackets, the Kenosha Maroons, Kansas City Blues. And in 1925, the Kenosha, uh, Kenosha Minneapolis, and Racine left. So they were like one-hit wonders. <laughs> uh, 1925, Blues changed the name to the Cowboys. Not the Cowboys that we know today, obviously. Um, it's a whole different team. And then Canton rejoined. The New York Giants, which is the fourth oldest team in the league, they were founded by Tim Mara, who paid $500 to join the NFL. So it went from that $100 stakes in 1920 to $500 in um, 1925. Um, obviously, the New York Giants name came from, you guessed it, their New York. There's a lot of tall buildings, there's skyscrapers, so... What better name to call them than the New York Giants? So congratulations to y'all being the fourth NFL team. I get a Jason Garrett clap. <laughs> Moving forward, uh, 1926, three teams changed their name and four teams were added. The Brooklyn Lions, the Hartford Blues, the Louisville Colonels, and the Los Angeles Buccaneers. Wow. Um, 
one thing that you'll notice during this era, a lot of teams, like, it was a lot of flip-flopping going on. This team um, grew. This team died. This team merged with this team, and then they came back, and then it was like, all right, we, we could do it now, and we're on, and then they folded, and then another team joined. Like, it was a lot of flip-flopping going on. See, that wouldn't happen today's time because we it's too much structure now. But back then, it, it was crazy. So in 1927, the league got rid of nearly half of their teams. Um, I think that um, at that time, they were trying not to fold completely, so they were trying to save face by getting rid of the weaker teams and the teams that wasn't generating revenue. So they wanted to make sure that they kept a captive audience. That was the uh, the deal back then. <clears throat> um, so then so then they added the Cleveland Bulldogs, the New York Yankees. Yes, the New York Yankees, um, which now is a baseball team. But, you know, back then, I don't know if there were any copyrights or anything back then. So it, it's like teams were just naming. It's like different teams named the same thing. It's crazy. It's very confusing. Um, and that brought the team back to 12. Uh, 1928, it went down to 10 teams again. The Duluth and Buffalo both lost spots. The Cleveland Bulldogs moved to Detroit and became the Wolverines. Wow. Um, 1929, that team folded. And then the Buffalo Bisons, the Orange Tornadoes, Staten Island Stapletons, Minneapolis Red Jackets, and the Boston Bulldogs were added to the league. Wow. <laughs> um, in 1930, three franchises dropped. Two were added, um, which were the Portsmouth Spartans, which today we know as the um, Detroit Lions, which is the fifth oldest team in the NFL. And I'll talk more about that once I get to the Lions part. Um, 1932, three teams folded and the Boston Braves were added. The Boston Braves. Like 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 the baseball team, the Atlanta Braves, whatever. But anyway, um, so, <laughs> so three teams folded. Uh, Boston Braves were added and which are known today as the Washington Redskins, if you guys didn't know that. So I'll talk more about that too. Um, so... That knocked it down to eight teams. 1933, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Pittsburgh, well, at the time, they were the Pittsburgh Pirates. So before the Steelers were the Steelers, they were 1933, the Eagles were born, and the Pittsburgh Pirates were born. Um, they didn't become the Steelers until a little bit later. Um, the Eagles lost their first game, their first ever game. Like their owner, the Eagles, check this out. So, the Cowboys play the Eagles this week, so this is perfect. This is perfect, y'all. So the Eagles' first ever game in 1933 against the New York Giants. Yes, the New York Giants. Um, their, their owner at the time was like, yeah, we want to um, just come in here and we want to show the league what we can do. And, you know, just just like the Eagles to talk trash, right? So um, they ended up getting their butts with 56 to 0. You know ain't no mercy rule, right? 56 to 0. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, <laughs> um, the owners at the time, Burt Bell and, and Lud Ray, called it the Eagles, basically commemorating the symbol from the NRA, the National Recovery Act. So um, I guess shout out to them for that, um, for, you know, doing that. I mean, that, that, you know, a lot of teams, when they name their team, you'll notice that, like, a lot of teams, in um, when they came to fame, they couldn't name their team. So it's very few that the team was like, all right, this is going to be the name. This is what we're going to stick with. A lot of them had fans write letters. You know, back then, there wasn't no cell phones or none of that. You know, social media wasn't out. So they literally had to write letters and send it to the teams. And the teams would sit there with like thousands and hundreds and thousands of mail on different names of teams that they should name the team. So, and I'll go through some of the teams that went through those things and decided from those categories and ended up being what they were. So that's going to be a little fun little thing too. So the Boston Braves ended up changing their name to the Boston Redskins. Hmm, that don't even sound right, do it. The Boston Redskins. <laughs> 1933, the first year, was also the first year to feature divisions. And was the first to allow the four pass anywhere behind the line of scrimmage. Imagine the NFL today without 
being able to throw the ball forward in 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 not just one spot. Like literally, like if you just had to just take the ball from the center, step back and throw it. You couldn't slide to your left. You couldn't slide to your right. If you ran anywhere, you couldn't throw the ball. You had to basically hike the ball and stand there in the pocket and throw it. You know, if you had to do that today, I don't think there'd be no quarterbacks playing because they would have got punished. And defensive linemen would have probably liked it because they'd have been getting money and they would have been getting sacks and they would have been getting all the glory for no reason. <laughs> um, and also that year was the first um, NFL championship game. Um, prior to that, the winner was the team. So prior to um, having divisions and actually having a championship game, um, how they determined what the winner was was um, whoever had the best record. Now, that's funny to me because what if there was a team that had a tie with another team? How would you still determine it? Because you can have ties. So I don't know. I don't know. That part I don't understand. Um, the first title game, the first ever title game was um, in a division title game was between the Bears and the Giants. And the Bears beat the Giants 23-21. to 21. Um, 1934, 10 teams returned. Portsmouth Spartans moved to Detroit and became the Lions. So the Lions were born at this point. Um, the Lions name came from um, the Lion is like the monarch, and they wanted to basically be the monarch of the league. That's where that name came from. Um, 1936, the NFL started drafting players. Now, this is interesting because so, prior to having a draft, um, Basically, players coming out of college, they were all undrafted free agents because there was no draft. So they were all free agents. So they were literally able to sign any teams. Now, stop and think about that for a minute. If you have a team or, or, or just a league where there's no draft and you're just a free agent, so whatever franchise got the most money is going to have the best players. Think about it. Because... The player that's coming out of college is going to go to the team, no matter what where the team is, they're going to go to the team that gives them the most money. Think about that. So they had to figure a system out where it was more like a lottery instead of um, just having an unequal balance of teams. That, that would suck not having that when you, when you sit back and think about it. Um, so... Again, with the Eagles, right? And, and I just laugh at them because they because it's funny. So the Eagles made their first ever draft pick after finishing the previous season two and nine. Mm, mm, mm. Their first their first ever draft pick was a halfback named Jay Burwanger, which ironically was the first ever Heisman Trophy winner. So check this part out. He never played a snap for them or in the NFL period. Because they couldn't meet his money demands. And this is what I go back to about the money thing. They couldn't. And again, even though they had the draft, there still wasn't a thing in place. You know how today, like when rookies come in, if you're a first round pick, you get a certain amount of money. So there's like a, a tier. So if you're a first round top 10 pick in the draft, you get a certain amount of high dollar money. Then it goes from there. So they had a pool of money to get from now. Back then, they didn't have that. So because of that nature, and I think that after this situation, they was like, okay, here's another dilemma. We got the draft, but we got to figure out now how to pay these people where they don't get drafted and then not play for that team. So the Eagles had to take an L for that. They basically um, they couldn't meet these de demands, and this guy never played football. He ended up taking a job in sales in a rubber company. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, in 1937, the Boston Redskins moved to Washington, D.C. And that year, the Cleveland Rams were born. 1939, the first ever televised game by NBC. Um, they used two cameras and eight people to execute the broadcast. And it was crazy because it was only broadcasted to 500 people in New York City. It wasn't broadcasted um, statewide or worldwide. It was just broadcasted in the New York area. And during the game, 
their broadcast, their cameras were so in a confined area. The both the players and the people in the stand, I want to say about 90% of the people at the game, and it was like 13,000 people at that game, didn't even know the cameras were there. That's how um, incognito they were. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, 1940, the Pittsburgh Pirates changed their name to what we know today as the Steelers. Um, it was the name came about by a steel worker in the steel industry because you guys know if you ever been to Pittsburgh, you know that especially back in back in the old days, there were a big steel mill um, state, kind of like Indiana where I'm from. It's a lot of steel mills and things of that nature. So they became the Steelers, and that stuck ever since. Um, <clears throat> also, the NFL unveiled their new logo, which is the one that we see today. The Chicago Bears logo with the um, in 1940, they, they created a logo and it was originally a black bear, a black Kodiak bear holding a football, which I think is the funniest thing ever. And in 1970, they changed it to the C that we know today on the side of the helmet. Um, 1943, the Cleveland Rams suspended operations for a year because so many of their players are drafted into the military for World War II. Uh, the Steelers and Eagles uh, merged, being known as the Steagles. The Steelers were going through a bunch of financial problems at the time. So um, they went to the Eagles organization and said, hey, you, do you, would you like to merge for a little while? See what we could do. We could split shares and this and that. So they were affectionately known as the Steagles when they originally merged. Um, and that, that team went 5-4-1. and one. <laughs> then the next year they separate again. It was like, you know what? We're not a force when we're together. We're actually probably better divided. So you guys go back over there and we'll stay here. You can go ahead and we'll just get rid of the Sheagles because that was an ugly name. So let's go back to the Steelers and the Eagles. Let's be separated because we ain't got time for that. Um, 1946, the Cleveland Rams. That's weird to say. Cleveland Rams moved to California and became the L.A. Rams. The original L.A. Rams, which won the championship the year before against the Redskins. Now, at that time, and I don't even think that happened any other time after that, but that was the first time that a team won a title and then moved to a new area the very next season. In 1950, the NFL merged with the All-American Football Conference, adding three new teams. The San Francisco 49ers, the Baltimore Colts, and the Cleveland Browns. The Browns um, team is the only team that's actually named after a real person. I don't know if you guys know this. And if, you, if there's any Cleveland Brown fans, fans that come in here, I know you guys know this history. But um, um, the Cleveland Browns name came named after Paul Brown, which was their first GM and head coach. He was loved that much that they named the franchise after him. Um, the 49ers name came, uh, were, they were named after the settlers from the gold rush back from 1849, 1849, 49ers, gold rush. Yep. That's how the 49ers name came. Interestingly enough, um, 1951, the original Colts folded the original, because again, the Colts folded and they came back again. This is what I was talking about, about these franchises folding, coming back, changing names, this team being this team, this being that team. Very interesting concepts they were that, that was going on back then. Um, 1952, the Dallas Texans were born, but only lasting one year, which was the last time the franchise in NFL history, was the last franchise in NFL history to actually just fold and go away. Um, remember the Dallas Texans. Um, and I want to say that five teams used that name before it became what it is today. Crazy, right? Um, and 1953 was the second coming of the Baltimore Colts. We're the second coming of the Colts. <laughs> In 1960. Oh, here we go, y'all. 1960, y'all. 1960, y'all. 1960. 1960. Um, all right, so 1960, the Chicago Cardinals moved to St. Louis, and they were the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, and, of course, in 1960 was the birth of what we know now as the Dallas Cowboys. Um, 
Unfortunately, they finished their first season 0 11 and 1. Dude. Ooh. Y'all talk about us being 3 and 3 right now. 3 and 3 ain't nothing right now. We're fine. But to go a season 0 and 11 and 1, even though it was lesser games back then, but you know, you, you get where I'm coming from. Um, the team was almost called the Dallas Steers. But the original owner, everybody knows, if you know your Cowboy Facts, you know the original owner, Tex Schramm. Tex Schramm wasn't having it. Tex Schramm was like, you know what? I don't want to name it the Dallas Steers because I feel like if it's the Dallas Steers, if we start losing games like they did their first year when they went when they didn't win a game um, and had one tie, which to me is still a loss, um, he just felt like they were going to get made fun of and be a laughing stock of the league. Good choice, Tex Ram, by naming them the Cowboys and not the Dallas Steers. Just imagine if they were the Dallas Steers. We'd be out here rooting, let's go Steers! Instead of how about them Cowboys, we how about them Steers? How about them Steers? <laughs> not Stairs. Steers! We're the Steers! They're going to put boots and spurs and and cowboy hats on the st- on the, on the the Steers. You know what? I'm, I'm so glad they're not called <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, so the American Football League started with eight eight teams. So the AFL came through, and uh, basically it was it wasn't a merger yet. It was basically the NFL and the AFL, but they played against each other at this time. Um, the American Football League started with eight teams, which were originally the Houston Oilers, which are now the Titans, um, New York Titans. Yeah, they were the New York Titans at the time, which are now the Jets. Uh, The Buffalo Bills, the Boston Patriots, um, L.A. Chargers, the Dallas Texans, um, who became Kansas City Chiefs, of course. Um, Oakland Raiders and the Denver Broncos, they were all AFL teams. Um, A lot of teams back then, to name their teams, which I was talking about earlier in the video, they did a a name the team contest. And that's that's what I was telling you when fans could um, send in letters to the team and be like, oh, you should name it this or you should name it that. That's where that came from. So um, in 1961, the, uh, the Broncos, Chargers, Bills, Patriots, and Raiders were the first teams to do the name contest. And there were some weird names out there, and I'll go over those some of those to you as I get to them. Um, the Chargers moved to San Diego in 1961. The Minnesota Vikings were born, and now there were 14 total teams at the time. So in 1963, the New York Titans changed their name to the Jets. Um, they were almost named the Gothams and the Burrows. Not like the Donkey Borough, but like... A borough, you know, like in New York, there's boroughs, you know, the five boroughs. But people didn't know what they were trying to say boroughs. So they was like, you know what? I feel like people are going to call us jackasses because a borough is a jackass, a donkey. So <laughs> they didn't want to name it the borough. So they was like, you know what? We're going to go with the Jets because we're right here by LaGuardia Airport. We're right by La- our, our, our stadium is right next to La- LaGuardia Airport. So we're going to name them the Jets. Good, good look on that one. That that was smart. They were smart back then, because they was like, "Nah, we ain't, we can't." This was stupid names. Um, the Dallas Texans relocated to Kansas City and became the Chiefs under uh, owner Lamar Hunt. And if you notice the the Cowboys and and the um, Kansas City family, they're very tight to this day. Um, Nineteen sixty six, the Atlanta Falcons were born. Now, check their names out. That they almost were. So the Atlanta Falcons almost were named the Atlanta Peaches, the Atlanta Vibrants, the Atlanta Lancers, the Atlanta Confederates, the Atlanta Firebirds, and the Atlanta Thrashers. So um, after looking at those list of names, I'm glad that the Falcons got their names. So the name, name, name the contest. Uh, name your team contest. It was, it was a, a a girl. I don't know if she worked for the team or if she was a part of the association, but it was a female. Shout out to y'all females, man. Y'all be coming up with some good names. Um, 
I tell you, there's no man in this world without a female. Because females, you, you you complete us. Y'all are ribs. So shout out to y'all women. Um, it was a woman that named the Falcons the Falcons because she said that it was a majestic bird. It was a strong, powerful bird with strong talons and to eat its prey. And that was her way of saying, OK, we should be the Atlanta Falcons because we need to eat our prey and we need to. Gah, gah, gah. Yeah. So you get it. Um, the Miami Dolphins were born that year as well. Um, and. The first ever Super Bowl was born, and it was at the time it was known the AFL NFL Championship. So again, remember these teams, these leagues were working together, but they were playing against each other. And in that first Super Bowl game, Green Bay Packers beat Kansas City Chiefs thirty-five to ten. Now, this is probably the reason why the trophy is called the Lombardi Trophy because Vince Lombardi, Green Bay Packers legend. They the Green Bay Packers won the first two ever Super Bowls. So again, they were named after they got the naming rights. Um, and you see that the Green Bay Packers whoop up on our team all the time. Like we can't, we just can't seem to beat Aaron Rodgers. But again, uh we, <laughs> oh, Green Bay, that's our Achilles heel. In 1967, the New Orleans Saints were born. Hmm. Um, November 1st, which is all Saints Day. Ironically, so their their team was named because, again, you know how New Orleans is a very musical uh, state. Uh, I mean, Louisiana is in a general, but you look at New Orleans is a very musical place. Like when you go there to visit, everybody's playing music. So, you know, the song, oh, when the saints come marching in. So they got their name from the song. And ironically, they were born. They became a franchise November 1st on All Saints Day. Hmm. Uh, 1968, the Cincinnati Bengals were born. And in 1970, the NFL and AFL finally merged. So basically, the NFL just absorbed the AFL. And um, Green Bay won the first two Super Bowls, like I said. So um, at first, when they saw that Green Bay won the first Super Bowl, the first two, they almost thought that it wasn't going to work out. The merger was gonna wasn't gonna work out because they were like, okay, are the teams gonna be balanced? Because when you see a team winning it twice in a row, especially back then, it's like, I don't know. Um, in nineteen seventy one, the Boston Patriots changed their name to what we know as affectionately as New England in Gillette Stadium. Um, in nineteen seventy six, the C Seattle Seahawks and Tampa Bay Bucks were born. Um. The Seattle Seahawks, other names that they were going to be were the Seattle Skippers, the Seattle Pioneers, the Seattle Lumberjacks, and the Seattle Seagulls. Hmm. So they picked the Seahawks because that is um, the bird of the north, the, the north, the northwest region, and um, nobody else had a Seahawk as a as a mascot or a logo, so they used it. Why not? Very simple explanation for that one. Um, 1984, the Baltimore Colts picked up and they moved to Indianapolis. In 1988, the Cardinals moved to Arizona, but they were named the Phoenix Cardinals until 94 when they became the Arizona Cardinals. In 95, the, the LA Rams moved to St. Louis. The Carolina Panthers and Jacksonville Jaguars were born, becoming um, expansion teams. In 96, the Baltimore Ravens were born. Um, remember, the Browns moved um, from Cleveland to Baltimore very temporarily, but they they were suspended somehow, and then the Ravens were just took over. Um, and then the next, I think the next year or two, they ended up moving back to Cleveland. So when you look at this round robin of the Colts, the, the, Ra the, the Ravens, and the Browns, it's almost like, they're all three the same team, technically. Not technically, but you know what I mean. Like, they all played in one place at one point in time. It's crazy. Um, In 97, the Houston Oilers packed up and moved to Tennessee and changed their name. Then they changed their name to the Titans in 99. They were almost named the Tornadoes, the Copperheads, the South Stars, and the Wranglers. Well, I'm glad they chose the Titans over those other team names because those are trash. 
2002, the Houston Texans added 32. Oh, wait, did I miss something? Oh, no, I'm just rolling through it. Um, the uh, In 2002, the Houston Texans were added, and 32 teams as we know it today were born. So now we have all 32 teams, and now you see where the 32 teams came from. Um, um, and then recent history, as you guys know, 2016, the, the St. Louis Rams moved back to L.A., and then the very next year, in 2017, the Chargers moved to L.A. with them, which – we just had this conversation last weekend um, when I was talking to marketing and I was just like, I don't understand why um, there's two Los Angeles teams. And now that they're getting a new stadium, they're going to be sharing it. And now I heard that the funding is not there. So they're now asking the players from the chargers team to put up money for this stadium. For all that, they could have stayed in San Diego. Like Mark says, San Diego is a beautiful place. I've never been to Cali, but he says that San Diego is a very beautiful place. Um, Nice 70, 70, 72 degree weather. Um, not too hot and not cold. Um, why would you leave that? I don't think their stadium needed to be rebuilt, maybe renovated, but that's about it. But, you know, and they should have just stayed in San Diego. That's where they had the fan base. Chargers ain't got no love in L.A. Come on now. But anywho, um, and now the Oakland Raiders, they will be moving to their new stadium in 2020, which ironically next year's NFL draft will be in Las Vegas and I will be there. So it'll be my first time going to Vegas. So that is um, a qu well, as quick as I can make it. I'm sorry, the video is 36 minutes long, but that's the quickest way I can tell you the history of the NFL. And that is, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, if you miss some things, you can rewind it back and slow it up and um, go from there. But that's how all the teams that's how all the teams were were um, were were made and came about and things of that nature. And um, oh yeah, and also too, the Buffalo Bills they were um, they're named after the actual Buffalo Bill guy, and um, so that's technically two teams that's named after an actual person. Um, and in the Minnesota Vikings, when the Minnesota Vikings came out, um, their name came from basically just the dominance of how Vikings are and how rugged that area of the United States is, you know, with all the, the rough weather and the stuff they get and, um, just a very rugged team. And as you know, they got that bullhorn that they, every time they score. So, yeah. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I just want to do something a little different just to shake the uneasiness of our Cowboys being three and three. Um, I just thought you guys would appreciate me doing a video like this. Um, let me know what you guys think of the, uh, the history of the NFL video. I know I had to condense it a little bit. I might've missed some things, but it's cool. I didn't want to make it super long. It's already long enough, but, um, thanks again, to all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and tap that notification bell. So you get this content of your boy and, um, look out tomorrow. I'll be doing my matchup video on um, the keys to victory versus the Eagles for Sunday night football. And um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, happy Friday. Peace out, y'all.